Hi, everyone. Welcome to this week of the ASUS Graphics Card Show. So this week, um, sad to tell you all, it's going to be just me, no JJ for you. But we do have some exciting news. Um, as you can tell from the title, we've got a couple new card launches. Um, if you haven't already seen them, definitely something to be uh, pretty hyped about. And we'll be talking about a few other bits of info, like the Diablo 4 bundle that's out. Also pretty hyped about that. and just some driver updates and a few bit of info like that as well. So let's go ahead and get started. And uh, actually, let's first, let's see who's here. Hi, Pidgey. Hi, Michael. Glad to see you both here. So as always, we're going to go ahead and start off with uh, driver updates. Um, I know JJ talks about this a lot, but it's always recommended to kind of keep these up to date, especially since a lot of it has to do with upcoming like game performance. And that is kind of the whole point of like the game ready drivers. So recently, Redfall has launched, um, and NVIDIA has a game ready driver for that. And I know there's been some other optimizations and tweaks that's come out since then. So DLSS 3, Reflex added for that. And what a lot of you are probably even more hyped about is the Diablo 4 Server Slam. So if you're looking to get in on that, um, I believe it happens tomorrow. Definitely go ahead and make sure you update so you're ready for this. Um, that'll actually feature DLSS 2. And then for those of you who have not been fully following along, once Diablo fully launches, it'll actually be upgraded to DLSS 3. So right now with DLSS 2, you can go ahead and kind of get like a sneak peek at things. So that's the big news for the new driver. Um, you've got some others like Showgunners uh, has launched, DLSS2 support for that, and then just adding support as well for Kovacs and some normal chron Chronicles. So not a whole lot in this one um, as far as like, you know, big hype or anything, given that Diablo is going to launch soon, but not fully out yet. But definitely, again, worth checking out for the server slime that's coming up. Yeah, Michael, I am super hyped about it. I'm going to see if I can get on myself and enjoy it. Uh, fingers crossed, we'll see. Hi, Sniff. Welcome in. So just kind of moving on into the uh, Diablo 4 talk here. Um, Again, the server slam is happening tomorrow, and it looks like they've actually had an update. So we might even have DLSS 3 support with this um, based on their newest update. So we'll uh, we'll see. But yeah, it says the server slam is supposed to actually support DLSS 3 even, so I lied. You'll get to enjoy that and go ahead and kind of get like a real good preview of for when the game launches. And then for those of you who haven't already seen it, uh, right now, if you haven't already gotten a 40 series card, it's a good time to do it if you are hyped for Diablo 4, because not only can you get the game and get to enjoy the DLSS 3 support. So definitely some uh, some benefits there. You'll also get the light bearer mount and armor. You'll get the wings and a murloc pet. Happy to uh, happy to see the murlocs making their way over into um, Diablo as well. And then you'll get um, a World of Warcraft amount uh, mount and um, a Diablo Immortal cosmetic set. So again, picking up a card right now not a bad time if you're already looking to upgrade so you can get in on the bundle and get in on some of these little uh, goodies they have. As well, uh, on the subject of bundles, the Overwatch 2 bundle did just end. So if you did pick up a card recently, make sure to go claim that as well. Um, if you're into Overwatch 2, you don't want to miss out on those free bundles if you've already kind of uh, invested in the card. Let's see if we've got any uh, comments here. Uh, Robert, regarding your question, just follow up with support. Um, we'll be talking about just graphics cards here. 
uh, JJ may be able to talk to you a little bit more about that tomorrow. He's more involved with that aspect than I am. Um, so I recommend just one, go ahead and reach out to our support team. And two, uh, that might be a question better for tomorrow. Um, I don't know what he's got planned for his usual stream, but definitely follow up with support first and start there. So Speed Freak, um, this will just be kind of a blanket comment. Don't know what plans there are for like cards like that. Um, when we're able to speak about something and when we have the info to even do so for whatever comes next, we'll always be sure to like present that as soon as possible. Um, so it's a good segue to, uh, to remind you all to stay tuned to the ASUS Graphics Socials. It's just ASUS Graphics in a um, across Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube. We will always provide the latest info there as quickly as we can for anything, whether that's new card launches, whether that's promos and deals, whether it's you know bundles coming out, things like that. We'll always be sure to provide that info to you guys so you can stay up to date, whether it's wanting to get in on something new or wanting to make sure you're there at the start for availability of things. Um, and for some higher demand items, as we see that stock's available, we'll also be updating for those as well. So on the subject of sales and promos, we do have a few options right now um, available. So first off, the 4070 Ti Strix is $25 off a new egg. And again, that will come with a bundle. So it's a good option if you're looking to get into 1440p or even some 4K gaming. Great card for that. Save yourself a little bit of money and definitely get on the Diablo 4 uh, bundle as well. Uh, for any of those of you who are looking to have a little bit of lighter gaming, um, say like especially 1080p or maybe some 1440p, we've got quite a bit of range of discounts off of our 30 series. So we've got the dual 3060 Ti is $50 off on Amazon, and that's only 410 right now. The tough 3060 V2 is $80 off at Amazon and only 380 right now. The dual 3060 V2 is $45 off on Amazon, so it's only running 365 right now. And if you're content with a, a smaller card, um, single fan option, the Asus Phoenix 3060 V2 is $60 off, and it's only 329 right now. So $330, and you've got yourself a 3060 V2 with the extra VRAM and perfectly set up for like 1080p gaming. So that right now is one of the best values you can get. And while you won't get anything like the Diablo 4 bundle with it, it's perfect for either small form factor or kind of your budget and HTPC setups um, to get yourself into gaming. And then you can spend those savings. That $60 right there will get you Diablo 4 if you want it. So definitely some things to be hyped about there. No chair for Jake. Uh, ironically enough, Justin, there is actually one of the chairs right now that we have here. Um, I'm going to see if I can sneak that to JJ. We'll see. But chair for JJ first. He, he's been here longer. He deserves it more than I do. Steph, I'm surprised that you don't have one of the chairs yet. We, we need to. We need to get a feedback from you to see if the ROG chair is uh, modder friendly and if you can work from it. That's that's the endorsement we need. <clears throat> so moving on, we'll actually get into the most exciting news for today, at least in my opinion. If you haven't seen it already, we do have new cards that have recently launched. So as of yesterday, we launched the Tough Gaming 49OG and the ROG Strix 4090LC. <clears throat> now, for those of you who are just now seeing this, the OG is going to be utilizing the 3090Ti cooler. And 
the big thing here for this is that it's going to be a much smaller design comparatively because of that. The size comparison is 326 millimeters versus the approximately 350 millimeters in length. And going from the 3.65 slot down to a 3.2 slot thickness. And then the actual height of the card has decreased some as well. But the main points are going to be that it's shorter and a little bit uh, slimmer. So for those of you who have been building with some of the 40 series cards, you know that can be kind of a tight fit, um, especially with some of the real large cards like the 4090 Strix. So this is going to allow you for some better compatibility. <clears throat> and we'll continue to look into options, especially for the small form factor as well. So stay tuned for that. Um, for anyone who's, say, not caught one of uh, JJ's previous streams or seen some of the posts online, we do have the Pro Art as well, though that's only for 4070 Ti and 480, but it's 300 mil, uh, millimeters and two and a half slot design. So we're currently working on different designs and ideas that can work. Um, but this is a good start. For some of your popular cases, I believe like the NR200P, for example, and the Mesh Alicious can both fit this card, whereas some of the larger ones might be a little bit more difficult. And then, of course, the OG will be available in both an OC and a regular edition. And you can kind of see some of the design here. Again, this is going to be using the same cool, the same um, shroud and everything as the 3090Ti Tough was using. So anyone familiar with that will obviously be able to tell very quickly the similarities between them. Um, so not nothing really of new to note there um, as far as the design aesthetic. But of course, it's 4090. You're going to have all of the kind of same performance and everything you have there. The OC is clocked to 2595 megahertz um, in OC mode. So not losing out on any speed or anything with this. And then, of course, 4090. So while you're going to have the smaller size of the 30 series, you're getting DLSS 3 and all of the new gen tech as well. And then, of course, everything that we're making comes with our auto extreme tech and manufacturing process as well. And then probably one of the ones that I'm a little bit more hyped for. Actually, uh, let me back up. Just to make mention, again, this is going to carry the same 600 watt power limit. Um, and while it will feature the 30 series shroud and the 40 series PCB, it's worth noting, um, especially for those of you like wanting to water cool or something, the PCB will not match the current 40 series tough, nor will it match the, obviously for the 3090 Ti tough either. So this is a new PCB and will not share uh, cross compatibility. Um, so just worth pointing out there because I know that the tough card is a particular interest for water cooling. Let's see if we have uh, any questions about that one. Uh, yes, now as you noticed, the um, PCB is going to be a little bit different. Um, and we've got someone joining in as well to notate some of the differences there. So that's kind of the uh, quick overview for the Tough OG. And for the Strix LC, this is one that I'm particularly hyped about. So again, this is going to be sharing kind of that same design styling and, you know, a similar shroud and everything to the previous uh, 30 series Strix LC. So we're going to be once again using the AIO based solution, very similar design styling, as I mentioned, with a shroud, 240 millimeter radiator to cool it. Of uh, big note here is that this is a 2.6 slot thickness card. Um, and I believe the rough length is around 200 as well, or 240 as well. Let's see. I think we might have specs up now. 
So 560 millimeters length on the tubes. So you'll definitely have plenty of spacing for, you know, e even some larger cases, or if you have cases that might require some distance or wrapping around components in like some smaller form factor cases for mounting the radiator versus where the card can sit. And yeah, here we go. So it's under 300 millimeters length for the card, uh, under 133 millimeters in the height, and then 52 millimeters for the thickness. So you're basically right there at that two and a half slot thickness and under 300 millimeters. So if you've got these small form factor solutions that have some radiator space mounting, this might be an excellent option for you and is one of the reasons I'm really hyped for it. So off the top of my head, cases like our AP201, for example, that was designed with some water cooling in mind. Um, even though it can fit some of these larger cards, this one would also fit in there very well. And then some of your cases like the NRP200, for example, this might also be a really good fit for it, just depending on what the design styling and everything that you're wanting to try to fit in there is. And I will go ahead and link to you guys as well the these. So that is for the Tough 4090. And this is for XLC. So do either of you guys have any comments or uh, questions about this? Yeah, Pidgey, I am fully hyped right now for the white 4090. Um, that's going to be the one I'm actually going to be picking up myself uh, at some point. So I've just kind of fallen in love with that styling and just how clean they all look. Sniff with uh, love for the LC version. I can imagine so, given all the water cooling you do. Not surprised one bit with that. So... For availability and for like pricing information, that's TBD and should hopefully have some more information soon. Um, JJ may even have some for you in his stream tomorrow. So we'll see how quickly we can gather that information and make sure to provide it to you guys. But again, definitely, definitely worth being hyped for, especially for anyone who is having uh, size restrictions in their uh, current setups with. Um, the larger cards, like the Strix 4090, these are well worth checking out just for that alone. And then, let's see. So for the Strix LC, you're going to be able to push this clock seam a little bit higher. It's 2640 megahertz for the boost and 2610 um, for just your default mode. So, and this is, of course, before tossing in something like GPU Tweak 3 and seeing how far you can push it there. Or again, like I've mentioned, just kind of hitting that uh, one button OC to see what it'll push up to. So always make sure to check that out as well. It's free performance for um, just a short bit of work and can help you get that a little bit extra out of your card if you're needing it. Um, especially, especially with some titles starting to really push even the 4090 series, such as uh, Cyberpunk with the new RT Overdrive. A little bit of extra performance might go a long ways there in uh, getting you over the 60 FPS mark, depending on what settings you have enabled. So that's the quick overview of those two cards. Uh, does anyone have any questions? Any feedback they'd like to give for both of those? Before we move on? All right, if not, then I guess uh, we'll uh, go ahead and move on to our uh, spotlights for the day. It'll be a short and quick stream for everyone. So first off, I want to highlight a fun little thing that Justin Chu has been putting together. So for those of you who don't know, um, Justin Chu, Chu, he's a regular in our Asus PCDY group and has been a big fan of RG for a while now and tends to do some pretty 
clean work. So here, he's actually started to modify the Z790 Maximus Extreme board to match more to the white ROG Strix card. And he's gone through the, effort, the extra effort to blend this into a like a white and black um, dual theme versus the more like white and silver that the uh, Strix begins with. So he's put together some custom work here on the right side of the shroud, along with painting everything to this white design. He's gone as far as redrawing the ROGI in <laughs> with um, like paint pens and stuff. So he's putting a lot of effort into this, and I'm really excited to see how this project turns out. So what do you guys think about um, like a Maximus Extreme, like a whiteboard? I know Sneff's a real big fan of um, like the white moonlight color schemes and stuff. So I could uh, could definitely see him putting together something similar like this too in uh, some of his builds. And then for the actual spotlight today, we have just a fun little build put together from Pidgey PCs. Now, this right here immediately made me think of kind of some of the small form factor use cases for that new Tough OG just immediately stood out to me. Um, so I, I had to share it today and give it some props. Like because of the smaller size, you can do a lot more builds like this where you're just kind of stuffing the card and everything else into the build in the smallest footprint you can. So he's done some very clean work with this and being able to get everything together. You can see here the uh, NR200 and, you know, there's there's not a whole lot of space here for, for everything. And he's managed to kind of squeeze it all in here. And let's see, this is actually featuring the 3070. So to give you an idea, the 3070 is not quite as large as the 3090 Ti, um, which again is going to use the same cooler as the uh, now to 4090 OG. So this little bit of space that you have here, that's where the tough OG will sit. So even with a build this small, you'd be able to put that tough 4090 OG in there. It'd be packed full for sure. Um, but yeah, I, I saw this and loved it. And I was like, this is exactly what, what pe people will be able to do with a 4090 now. It won't have to be, you know, just, I say just, but just a 3070. You can actually go all out and still be able to fit it in such a small case like this. And then kudos to him as well for keeping everything nice and clean. While I know that there is a card there, it's very easy from my own experience doing small form factor builds to have wires and everything just kind of strewn out around the background. So props to him. Very well done on keeping it so clean. Yeah, small form factor can be a blast to do. It's uh definitely takes some effort. Um you know, with like a, a larger ATX size case, it's easier to do, at least in my opinion, um, just because you've got more space, especially in behind like the panel and stuff to route cabling and everything. But in this instance, like you've got very limited space and like where can you run cables and doing cable management and that aspect gets way more difficult. And then you definitely, especially depending on the case, will have some times where like the order in which you do stuff starts to matter a lot more because, you know, with like an ATX case, you'll generally always have access to both the graphics card and say like the CPU cooler at the same time. But here you don't like the GPU cooler has to be the last thing that goes in or you can't reach anything. So it's a 
to me, like small form factor is definitely much more of like putting together a 3D puzzle. Um, but like Pidgey mentions, that's a part of the fun is kind of going through and being able to still fit everything in and make a nice build, even when you're restricted to that small form factor. Yes, and if I see your comment now, definitely a huge fan of the white. Um, on the same page with you right there for sure. So I'm with the launch of the 4070 Duel that we had recently, definitely curious to see what other options we may have coming out. Um, I know I've seen some people mention that they wish we had the 4090 LC in white. I'll echo that sentiment. Um, I think that would have been a gorgeous design to have in like a full white, especially now that we have like the white region three and the white Rio three. Um, if that kind of design had been able to be incorporated, it would have been absolutely perfect to me, especially for some of these smaller form factor builds. So I think that covers us for most of the topics today. Just a court, short and quick stream to kind of recap things for everyone and kind of go over the new launches um, and remind everyone to cash in on the Overwatch 2 bundle. If you uh, haven't gotten it yet, that we've got a couple promos going in that if you're you know looking to upgrade and that we've got these new cards out, especially for those of you with smaller systems like this. Um, I've actually got an NRP 200 at home. Real curious now to see how well I can fit in one of the tough OG cards once it comes out and is actually available. Uh, but now I'll actually open it up. What are some things that you guys might like to see for some future streams on here? Um, I know JJ covers a lot again on his Friday streams, but are there specific things any of you guys would like to see? Like, would you like us to go over overclocking? Would you like us to talk about undervolting? Um, what is it that you guys might like to see us talk about in some of these uh, future streams? Any knowledge or info or just showcases and types of stuff that y'all might want to see? So you'd like to see um, kind of some more like curated uh, curated experiences with um, the tech from like some smaller content creators and stuff. Um, is that what you're asking for? Yeah, that's definitely one that we're talking about right now is seeing about doing some uh, for the YouTube channel some overclocking and or undervolting. I know that the kind of efficiency side of things has been a topic of discussion recently, um, along with what PSU do I need? And, you know, the kind of one of the go-to recommendations right now is like 1200 watts for 4090 and 1300K. And that will work for sure, but it's not necessary. Even with overclocking, it may not be necessary. So we're actually looking at putting together a video um, in the somewhat near future to discuss the efficiency side of things. And like, especially as you mentioned, SNAP, with undervolting and overclocking, like what is the performance difference? Like how much performance are you going to lose undervolting and power limiting the card? And how much performance and how much extra power draw will you have with overclocking? And like you said, um, for small form factor, especially the temperature differences might be of high value to people because especially like it's been known for a while now is when you start overclocking, especially on the CPU side, temps can ramp up quickly. Um, <clears throat> but especially when you pack everything into a small form factor, you might only have that 240 millimeters of space for like an AIO. You might even be relegated to only air coolers and sometimes even something like the real low profile, not two coolers. So being able to undervolt and one, knowing how to do that. And then two, knowing what performance differences you might be able to expect would be worthwhile to some people. So um, 
I'll definitely make sure when we go through that video, Snaf, that we include some temps and stuff as well. Um, we've definitely been looking at the power draw side of it, but it's worth noting temps uh, for sure, as you mentioned. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I'll definitely talk to the team and see what we can do as far as finding some of these like uh, smaller content creators and seeing what kind of uh, hands-on experience they have with things. Um, I get where you're coming from, from like wanting to see things from a, a bit of a different perspective than what say Linus might provide or, you know, Jay might provide or some of these others may provide as far as like feedback and insight. Um, so we'll see what might be able to be done. Um, and then, of course, too, we're going to be providing some of our own content, which I know may feel different than, say, a, a smaller content creator. Um, but that's actually part of why I asked this, because we're looking to start doing some videos as well. As Sneff mentioned, some like how to's for different things. Um, I know one thing that I want to touch on just because of my water cooling background is how to water cool. And it might be worth noting in both small form factor aspects and in a larger aspect, the differences there, because I'm sure Sneff can tell you and uh, Pidgey probably as well that water cooling in small form factor is a world of difference than water cooling in a like a standard ATX sized case because you are working with such small um, volume and the spacing for stuff becomes far more problematic. So something that we've been considering doing, um, if you've got any feedback of like, if you want one or the other, if you just want a general how-to guide, definitely let us know. Um, definitely excited to see that we've, uh, so while the RGZ 11 was actually designed with some water cooling in mind, there's been surprisingly few people that have gone to that extent. Um, I know when it first came out, there were a uh, few, few builds that were done. Um, I think they were sponsored content from different uh, modders and stuff, um, showcasing that like you could fit full water cooling in there, but we've definitely not seen enough of it. Um, I know JJ is also a huge fan of the Z11, so we'll both be really excited to see what you do with that, Pidgey. <clears throat> yeah, that has definitely been um, a conversation topic. and. I know that the small form factor crowd is probably feeling it even more so because the SFX available power supplies that, you know, push 1200 watts and stuff, there's not a lot of that high wattage SFX uh, type power supplies. Um, so we've got our low key and stuff now that starts to help with that, but it's far easier to find like 1200 watts and plus in full ATX size versus the like SFX and FXSL. So I think providing some insight and showing the differences there and that, you know, even if it starts to push close to that 1000 watt, doing some like a little bit of undervolting even may be all you need to kind of meet that break point. So that's something we're looking into is that kind of whole series about efficiency where the overclocking, the undervolting power limiting, and then the power draw um, as well. So we don't have an ETA yet just on that video, but it's uh, something that's in the works. Um, and we'll be looking at whether to focus on just the efficiency overall and with like say a 4090 and a kind of how low can you go with it? Um, or if we'll also include some additional things like the 4070, for example, and like, it's already a very low power draw card as evidenced by the single eight pin connector uh, being more than sufficient for it. So in those cases, um, showcasing that, you know, it's already such an efficient card and that even those can go lower if you're really concerned about how much power draw something is generating. Uh, I think some of that will be actually an interesting discussion. Yeah. That's uh, part of the reason that we want to discuss this topic as well is because I've seen a lot of posts and comments of, I have an 850 watt power supply. I have a 750 watt power supply. I have a, I've even seen people ask, I have a thousand watt power supply. Do I need to upgrade? And 
for a lot of these questions, the answer is either no or not necessarily. Um, if you are going to run a 4090 and like a 1300K or something, and then you're going to heavily overclock both, then yes, you know, 850 watts or special like 750 watts may not be sufficient, um, especially depending on what the game you're doing, you're going to run, or um, even more so if you're doing like productivity. Um, that's been kind of another aspect of it as well, is because generally in gaming, you're not going to tax both 100% at the same time. But when you're doing productivity work, it's very easy to run the entire system at 100% load. And those can be two very different uh, power draw um, aspects. So it might be something to where if someone is actually right there at that 1,000 watt mark, but applying a small undervolt or power limit or something to the graphics card will let them utilize it um, fully but will have very minimal impact to their system comparatively. And whether that's just to expedite their upgrade, um, especially in that aspect where like your time is literally your money. So being able to utilize the card earlier can save you a lot of time on the time it takes to edit. Um, and then, you know, not having to wait if the power supply you're looking for is sold out, or, you know, if you're just trying to save up to be able to afford that like 1200 watt power supply, because you do actually end up needing it for some reason, um, especially if you're ordering like a, say a high-end thread ripper system or something of that nature, um, where it's potentially even up to two CPUs and far more cores. So we're going to be looking into that and then being able to provide some accurate recommendations as well. Um, but for those of you who are um, curious about the like what kind of power supply do you need we do have a, a kind of a calculator um i guess and a recommended uh psu table as well so this right here will help you kind of gauge what you need um there are some things I think that need to be added. It may actually be fully updated now. So let's see, which one is it? So on this page, the one I just linked, we've got a kind of a calculator right here, and you'll see, you know, if you're running a Core i9 and it's cut off, but an RTX 4090 recommended wattage 1000 watts. And if you're overclocking, 1200 watts. And so, of course, with these calculators and stuff, the power draw will always be given as a little bit of a safe measurement, as of course it can vary a little bit, especially with like a strict 4090 is going to have a higher power limit than some other cards potentially. And then you'll see that as you say, choose a 4070, it's 750 watts, even with the i9. And then we do as well have a short little cheat sheet here if you just want um, kind of a recommendation at a glance. That's also another option to use. And then as was uh, note, noted by the teammate, the Tough Gaming um, ATX 3.0 PSUs that have launched recently are very very reasonably priced um if you're looking for an upgrade so something that can uh can definitely be recommended um you can see here that 189.99 is the price it's currently out of stock, but, um, you know, you're going to have the ATX 3.0 addition to this. You're going to have gold rating efficiency. And then, you know, of course, you're going to have, like, our XL Tech fan. It's going to be quiet. It's going to have the same precision and, you know, attention to quality and everything that we put into our products. Um, but 1,000 watts it, for ATX 
3.0, especially APSUs, this is quite a good price. Um, and then for those of you who don't need like the thousand watt, for example, uh, it comes in 850 as well. So definitely something to keep an eye out if you're, you know, really do have an underpowered PSU and you're looking to make that upgrade. This is, you know, definitely an option to keep an eye on. Yeah, that is, that's definitely been an old school um, kind of recommendation. And there's been a lot of discussion around it, especially with like, you know, the peak power usage you have versus like, are there ever any spikes in the power draw and allowing some of that room for that. And then some of that discussion actually came about because of the way the power curve of a lot of power supplies work. Um, historically, prior to the titanium series coming out, uh, it was like, I think 50 to 80 percent was generally like the rough like peak for efficiency, depending on the um, actual power supply. And that like, especially at like 10 to 30 percent usage, um, the power efficiency tanked. And it's just because of, you know, how it was designed and everything. And then with titanium, it was that it had to meet that, I believe, 90 percent efficiency rate starting at like 10 percent power usage. So um, but. Again, you know, that's been quite some time now and things have changed over time. Um, generally, it is recommended to leave at least a little bit of headroom. You don't want to be like consistently pegged right out at the 1000 watt mark if you're using 1000 watt PSU. Um, but you don't necessarily have to be quite as costly as long as you're buying like a quality PSU that's designed in mind to be utilized at that higher um, higher peak ratings. Yep, 10 year warranty included on these. So they are designed to last. Um, who knows if in 10 years, ATX 3.0 and stuff will even be here given the <laughs> continued change to connectors that have been occurring, but the power supply will definitely last that long. Yeah, while I can't personally speak, um, JJ would actually be good to have here for this particular comment. Um, he's definitely more knowledgeable on the technical side. So while I can't say if it only needs like 5% extra or stuff like that, um, I do know that these like PSUs are definitely designed being able to handle these higher power cards in mind. Um, part of why you've in general seen higher capacity power supplies being made to begin with, um, I think I've seen up to like 1600 watt now, which for those of us in the US is basically pushing the max that you can even draw from the circuit. Um, <clears throat> but like 1000 watts and stuff have become a lot more um, common, and all of it's been refined as well. So it's not just about, you know, what's the maximum rating for the power supply. It's, you know, how well does it handle if there's like some Electricity. If, for example, you have a power surge to the house, things of that nature. So, um, while for the most part, power supplies don't seem to have changed as much because obviously you don't really see like performance and improvements that, like, if you change out your power supply, excluding um, just not having power to begin with, that it's going to like super push the performance higher, or you know, there's not the same kind of like tech changes that you see with like graphics cards and things of that nature. Um, there's a lot that's actually been put into it over the time. <clears throat> but definitely with the uh, conversation here, I think this would be uh, a really good topic for us to do a video on some how-to and breakdown and stuff on. So we'll look at trying to uh, expedite getting that out and um, showcasing a little bit more about that side of things. <clears throat> Does uh, anyone else have any uh, topic or just uh, general questions they'd like to, to ask before we uh, sign off for today?
and yes, Michael, I'm biased as well, but I do also genuinely think that we uh, make rather high quality parts. Um, I know JJ talks about it quite frequently with our auto extreme tech and stuff for the GPUs, but it's uh, something that we definitely put pride into is the like physical quality and everything of the products we're developing and launching. Um, for ARGB, uh, are you wanting like a discussion about it? And if so, in what way? <laughs> Regarding a white Strix, um, I don't have any info yet as to if we will have one. Um, I know that I personally like one. Uh, just so that I could, you know, have that aesthetic and stuff because I've actually generally run kind of around the 70 series cards um, just because a lot of the games that I play tend to not be as graphically intensive. Um, again, shout out to Diablo 4. Don't think that's going to need a 4090 to run on 4K. Um, so being able to have like a 4070 Ti Strix would be perfect for me. Um, I just really wanted in that wide aesthetic. So <clears throat> regarding the RGB fans, um, JJ mentioned it, I think, in a stream recently. Um, there's, I mean, you can see from some of our products like the AOs and stuff that there's some work being done for RGB fans. Don't have an ETA on, like, a separate standalone availability for those. But it is something that is in the works. Um, so we will see TBD on um, on availability for that. Um, my teammate here might know if we are going to be doing any type of uh, standalone RPG fan soon. Um, I want to say that there was some development in that direction um, to offer something standalone. I just don't know if it would be like a Strix model, or if it was going to be something else. Um, so stay tuned for that. Um, I'll make mention of it to uh, JJ, though, since I'm pretty sure he's going to be doing his stream tomorrow. And then he might be able to mention more about that if there is something in the works for sure on that, that topic. Yeah, and as they noted, um, for the PSU side, the um, RG Strix R Gold model, it's already been announced. You can go check it out now. Um, I am actually pretty excited for this one. Uh, I like the design of it. And it will feature some RGB. There you go. I'll link this one in, in as well that's been mentioned. So... It's changed the styling um, a decent bit from, yeah, the Loki also has it as well. Um, so it's changed a little bit in the design. Um, as I mentioned, I actually really like the styling. I think this kind of uh, combed graded look over the ROGI adds some kind of a uh, subtlety to it. And then, as was mentioned, these should be coming out uh, soon. Um, I haven't heard of a specific date yet, but I'm actually looking forward to these. Um, I don't know yet if we'll have a white version of this, um, as we did for the prior Strix PSUs. I'm hoping we do. Um, but I do know that if you're wanting RGB and white, that we do have the Loki right now, which has a white option. So that's always something you can look toward, too. All right. Uh, any other questions, everyone?
Yeah, Snaff, I'll like echo the same thing. Um, I mean, technically the 850 watt will run a lot of um, products. So in theory, it's not like needed unless you're at that 40, 90 level. But yeah, that's... I've I've made the same comment as well. Um, I'd love if the white versions were in that thousand watt mark, so that they could fully cover everything. Um, as mentioned, like right now, we don't have, as far as I know, a white version of the new Strix Gold editions, um, or Gold R editions, I should say. So, hopefully, if we get one, this one will be white in that thousand watt, and then you'll be able to use it with like the white forty ninety and everything, which is exactly what what I'm after. Yeah, I agree. That's that's my sentiment as well. Um, and so, uh, as I mentioned before, and I know JJ's mentioned it some too, that uh, when we get feedback like this, we're always passing it along. Um, so, fingers crossed, we'll see what we get as far as like the next PSU section. Um, I know I keep harping on like wanting a uh, a white uh, Hyperion case. I I still want that. I'm I'm going to die on that hill. Um, but if we could have like a flagship, you know, top of the line white series would be perfect to me. Um, as far as I know, you would probably only be eligible for the Overwatch 2 bundle. Um, you can try registering it and you can try reaching out um, to support, but I'm I'm pretty positive that if it's already been um, a few weeks, then you'd be only on the Overwatch 2 bundle. Um, so like I said, it, uh, I would suggest you can try to register it through the uh, website. If it works, it works, but um, I'm pretty sure you can only do it for the Overwatch 2 since the uh, Diablo one just started, I, I'm pretty certain that's uh, fairly tight on the time range um, right now. <laughs> yeah, that 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 is absolutely the dream snap. Um, but I will say you totally forgot to include the Ryujin three in white as well. Um, which will be coming out at some point. I uh, don't know the ETA on that. I know it's a little bit of ways away, um, but I know JJ's covered that in uh, his Friday streams. Um, so that's that's definitely a setup I want to put together. And then I guess right now I'll have to paint the uh, Hyperion white, but... <clears throat> yeah, I've also... I'm, I'm hoping that we will, in the future, add some... Um, some more white formula boards. That's actually what I currently run myself right now is the Z690 formula board. And I don't have any intention to change until I have to, because I just like the look of that way too much. <laughs> just keep leaving the feedback and uh, we'll keep passing it along. All right, everyone. Well, I think if that's um, it for the questions, we'll sign off here for the day. Thanks for joining us. Um, as always, it's great to have you all here and get to kind of discuss things with you. I was happy to have a little bit of a Q&A today. Um, like I said, we'll see about expediting doing some kind of like efficiency and overvolting and undervolting video and get that out to you more quickly. Um, and then hopefully provide some information to the community that not every RTX 40 series needs 1200 watts <laughs> and maybe uh, maybe stress people out a little less about that. Um, as always, too, if you're looking for kind of the latest updates on our graphics cards, follow along on the ASUS Graphics NH channels. That's on the like our Facebook, our Twitter and our YouTube. So we'll continue to put out videos there as well. A lot of it's going to be unboxings. We'll have some how-to stuff coming and some kind of educational content. 
And we'll also be doing some kind of showcase and inspiration builds as well to kind of give you and I guys an idea of like what to expect when you're, you know, trying to go for an all test system or trying to go for an all RG system or, you know, even working with like the Asus Prime and dual series now. <clears throat> so if you guys have any um, feedback as to that, please always pass it along to us, uh, especially in the group. JJ and I both keep an eye on everything that's coming in there. So that's the Asus PCDY uh, group on Facebook. Um, leave the feedback there and we'll uh, do our best to either answer any questions or see what we can put together for the future for you guys. Thanks again for joining and see y'all next time.